Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over almost all the Oscar nominations, which movies I've seen, and which ones I want to win. I'm also going to be doing a video after the Oscars, giving you my thoughts on the results, so let's get started. By the way, this podcast episode is going to have a large visual component. I'll have a slideshow up on YouTube with everything written down in a visual way so it's easy to see everything I'm saying. It's not mandatory that you watch the YouTube video, but it's recommended if you are having trouble following along. So first of all, I'm going to skip these categories of Oscar nominations. The live action short film, because I haven't seen any of the nominations. The animated short film, because I haven't seen any of the nominations. The original song, because I honestly just don't remember any of the songs, even though I may have seen the movies they were in. International feature film, because I haven't had a chance to see any of those and short subject documentary because I haven't seen any of those either. So first of all, I'm going to be going through all the writing awards. Starting with the best original screenplay, the nominations were Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of a Chicago 7. As you can see, if you're on YouTube, what I've done is the nominations in orange, that being Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, Sound of Metal, and Trial of Chicago 7 are the ones I've seen. The one circled in red, Promising Young Woman, is the one that's predicted by the Hollywood Reporter to win the award. And the one circled in blue, Judas and the Black Messiah, is the one I want to win. It's going to be like this on every slide for every category I cover. So yeah, for original screenplay, the reason I want Judas and the Black Messiah to win, first of all, was I, I haven't seen Promising Young Woman, so of the other options, of Minari, Sound of Metal, Trial of the Chicago 7. Trial of Chicago 7, it's Aaron Sorkin, so you would think that's the one I would want to win, but maybe it's because that was the first movie I saw, it's been so long, or maybe it's because Judas and the Black Messiah, it just, it was a better movie overall. I, I think Judas and the Black Messiah is the one I think should win for best original screenplay. Trial of Chicago 7 had that, that quippy, back and forth, quick Aaron Sorkin dialogue, which was very good, but there was no standout like some of his other scripts. And I think Judas and the Black Messiah was just overall a, a sort of a better written movie. So next up, the nominations for adapted screenplay are Borat Subsequent Movie Film, The Father, Nomadland, One Night in Miami, and The White Tiger. Of those, I've seen Borat Subsequent Movie Film, Nomadland, and One Night in Miami. The predicted winner by according to The Hollywood Reporter, is Nomadland, and who I want to win is One Night in Miami. I loved the Nomadland Nomadland script. The reason I don't want it to win is because it's super hard for me to tell. I can't judge the script because it's hard for me to tell what's actually the script and what's not. There's some things you can tell, but a lot of it, because it's blended so well with real-life people, you can't really tell what's written and what kind of was made up and can't come up with on while filming. And so, and One Night in Miami has a more clear cut screenplay where each character has a different motivation. And it's very much about the dialogue and the characters, different perspectives on things. So that's why I want One Night in Miami to win this award. So next up are the more technical awards. Production design. The nominations for best production design were The Father, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, News of the World, and Tenet. Of those, I've seen Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, News of the World, and Tenet. I have not seen The Father. The Hollywood Reporter predicts that Mank is going to win this. And for me, I actually couldn't decide between two movies who I'd want to win, and that would be Mank and Tenet. If either of those movies win, I'll be really happy. Obviously, for Tenet, with it being a Christopher Nolan movie, it's huge with big sets and big set pieces and big action pieces and a lot of crazy production kind of um, sequences. But Mank 2, the way the way that it, the sets were made to look like old Hollywood and the old black and white, the way they were designed for black and white cameras was very good. So I can't really make a decision. So if I'm hoping either Mank or Tenet wins. So next up is makeup and hairstyling. Emma? Hillbilly Elegy, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, and Pinocchio, which I hadn't heard of before now, were all nominated. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is going to win. And for me, 
I gotta agree. I want Ma Rainey to win or Mank, but right now, really, Ma Rainey's black bottom. The makeup on all the characters was on point, and then we'll talk about the costuming later. It was very period piece. It was different. It was supposed to blend into that time period, and it really, it really stood out as being very good. So next up, the costume design. The nominations are Emma, Ma Rainey, Mank, Mulan, and Pinocchio. Of those, I've seen Mank, Mulan, and Ma Rainey. Hollywood Reporter has predicted Ma Rainey will win, and I hope that Ma Rainey wins. Of all these movies, it has the best costume design. Mank is up there. Mulan was pretty good, but I definitely think Ma Rainey takes the cake on that one. So for sound design, I've actually seen all these movies, and the and the nominations were Greyhound, Mank, News of the World, Soul, and Sound of Metal. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting Sound of Metal will win, and I hope so too. The Sound of Metal was obviously, it's about a person going deaf. The sound design in this movie was amazing. You get to hear what it's like from the main character's perspective as he goes deaf, and you get to hear people speaking in kind of a blurry, I want to say blurry, but it's more like muffled in a muffled way, and the hearing him go deaf, and then when he gets the the implant that lets him hear, hearing the kind of metallic, not quite right hearing he gains from that. Um, Sound of Metal, obviously, should win this one, and I hope it does. So next up is score. The nominations were De Five Bloods, Mank, Minari, News of the World, and Soul. Of those, I've seen all of those except for De Five Bloods. Hollywood Reporter is predicting Soul will win, and I hope so too. Going back and watching sequences in the movie, the score is so experimental and weird and different, and it works really, really well with the movie. It's composed by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and then the band was played and composed by John Batiste, and I definitely think Soul should win this one by far. Mank is my second choice, but Soul is miles ahead. So then for visual effects, the nominations were Love and Monsters, The Midnight Sky, Mulan, The One and Only Ivan, and Tenet. Of those, I've seen Mulan, The One and Only Ivan, and Tenet. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting The Midnight Sky will win that. I haven't seen it, so of Mulan, The One and Only Ivan, and Tenet, I'm hoping Tenet wins. It's tough with Christopher Nolan movies because so much of it is done practically. You can't really tell. You know it's not an overabundance of CGI and visual effects. And that's good. You can't even notice what's a visual effect, which means it's a good visual effect. So I think Tenet would be my first choice. But I also think they were very good in Mulan and One and Only Ivan. But I do hope Tenet wins. Then for cinematography, I've seen all the nominations. And those were Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, News of the World, Nomadland, and Trial of the Chicago 7. I Nomadland is is predicted to win, and I'm hoping it does. The cinematography on that movie was amazing, and it wasn't anything extremely fancy. It was kind of down to earth, just kind of watching this nomad live her life with a lot of sweeping nature shots and long lingering shots of the nature with the with the score playing in the background. And I really think of all these movies, Nomadland has the best cinematography because it really stands out while you're watching the movie. So next up is film editing. Nominated is The Father, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Of those, I've seen Nomadland, Sound of Metal, and Chicago 7. Sound of Metal is predicted to win, but I actually hope Nomadland wins. It was edited by the director, Chloe Zhao, and it was amazingly done. Even though it was very slow paced, that was obviously intentional, and I never got bored. Thinking about how they filmed this movie, Chloe Zhao must have had hours upon hours of footage and being able to edit it in a way that it's still interesting and cutting it down is, it's a tough task. And I think it was just a feat in editing and I really hope it wins. And then finally for the technical awards is directing. Nominated was Thomas Vinterberg, David Fincher, Lee Isaac Chung, Chloe Zhao, and Emerald Fennel. I've seen... David Fincher's Mank, Lee Isaac Chung's Minari, and Chloe Zhao's Nomadland. Chloe Zhao is predicted to win, and she better win. That movie was amazingly directed, and she kind of came out of nowhere and just made this amazing movie. It was the cinematography, everything about that movie, the performances, which are 
a major part of the director's job. Everything in that movie was really, really well handled, and Chloe Zhao definitely deserves this award. So now I'm going to go through the acting acting nominations. So for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Maria Bakalova, Glenn Close, Olivia Colman, Amanda Seyfried, and Yu Jung Yoon are all nominated. I've seen Maria Bakalova in Borat 2, Amanda Seyfried in Mank, and Yo Jung Yoon in Minari. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting that Yu Jung Yoon is going to win for Minari, and I hope she does. Her chemistry with the other characters, plus on her own, she really stood out as the best in that movie. She had many different layers and just really played multiple different sides of the personality of this of this grandma and she really made you care about the grandma almost instantly. So for best actress in a leading role, the nominations were Viola Davis, Andrew Day, Vanessa Kirby, Frances McDormand, and Carrie Mulligan. I've only seen Viola Davis in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Frances McDormand in Nomadland. And those are the two and those are the two performances that are expected to be the two front runners. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting Frances McDormand to win. And I hope she does. I think her performance in Nomadland was amazing because it wasn't the usual Oscars performance. There was no emotional or yelling or shouting scene. It was very subtle, but she completely just transformed into the character and it didn't even feel like a performance. Okay, so for best actor in a supporting role, the nominations were Sasha Baron Cohen, Daniel Kaluuya, Leslie Odom Jr., Paul Racy, and Lakeith Stanfield. I have seen them. I've seen every single one of those movies that they were in. And Daniel Kaluuya is predicted to win for Judas and the Black Messiah. I agree with this prediction, and I hope that he wins because he really stood out in that movie. His performance was electric, and even though he didn't have as much screen time as his counterpart, he totally ate up the screen time he had and delivered a fantastic performance. And for actor in a leading role, nominated was Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal, Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey, Anthony Hopkins, Gary Oldman, and Steven Yeun. I've seen all those performances except for Anthony Hopkins in The Father. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting that Chadwick Boseman will win for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and he better. The second I saw that movie, I knew right after that he he has to win Best Actor. That performance blew me away in every way, and I recommend that movie alone for anybody just to see the performance. It was so good, and in my opinion, the best part of that entire movie. Okay, so now for the actual awards for Best Movie and Documentaries. So for Best Feature Documentary, nominated was Collective, Crip Cramp, The Mole Agent, My Octopus Teacher, and Time. I have only seen My Octopus Teacher, so that's the one I want to win. And it's also the one that's predicted to win. That's a really good documentary on Netflix right now, and I'd, I would recommend it to everyone. So then for animated feature film, the nominations are Onward, Over the Moon, A Shaun the Sheep Movie, Soul, and Wolfwalkers. Of those, I've seen Onward, Over the Moon, and Soul. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting that Soul will win, and that's who I want to win too. Soul blew me away and, in my opinion, even deserves to be nominated for Best Picture. It's one of the best movies that came out in the last year, and it's something that I think everyone should see. And then for the final award that I'm covering, Best Picture, the nominations were The Father, Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Minari, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. I have seen all of those except for The Father and Promising Young Woman. The Hollywood Reporter is predicting that Nomadland will win, will win and I really hope so. Nomadland was my favorite movie of the last year, and I highly, highly recommended it. I don't think I have any complaints against the entire movie, and I really hope that that a lot of people see it. It's pretty much guaranteed that Nomadland will win. I'm, I think it's pretty much a lock right now, so I really hope that happens, and I think it will. So that's it for my hopes and my wishes for the Oscars. After the ceremony, I'll be doing a video breaking down what I thought of all the results, and if what I wanted happened, if the predictions ended up being right, and and what happened on the actual show. So stay tuned for that. Also, right now, 
You can submit a question or a topic for Chris and I. There's a form in the description. Basically, we'll be taking a question or topic at the beginning of every episode and addressing it. So we're hoping to get enough so that we have one for every single episode of the podcast. And that would be that would be amazing. So if you'd like to do that, please do. Let us know what you thought. What Who do you want to see win these awards? And who do you think will win these awards? You can do that. You could do that by sending us feedback. All the options and ways to do that are in the description. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.